Assalamualaikum. Welcome to this video tutorial on ASP.NET 4.5 for students of King Faisal University and for others who want to learn ASP.NET. This is part 26 in this series and is entitled Entity Framework in ASP.NET 4.5. Entity Framework is a convenient method of generating code based on database structure. It has an extension name of EDMX and it can be done by model first, database first, or code first. Most of the steps used in this tutorial were taken from Rowan Miller's video on model-first development using Entity Framework. We will create an ASP.NET website in CASP Activity 26. Then we will add an entity data model called DB Student Model. And using this empty model, we will add two entities, department and students. Then we will add association between the two entities and generate the database from the model. Then we will add some records. Please let me state this as early as now that when we are already generating the database from the model, we are going to encounter several errors. Although I was able to resolve the issue, it may not be the most effective way. Okay, let's create our website. File new website. This is activity 26. The first thing we're going to do is to add our entity data model. So there. And we'll call it DB student model. Just say yes so that it will be placed in AppCode folder. We're going to use empty, mo empty model. So finish. That means we don't have a database yet. And we're going to create a database based on this model. The next thing we have to do is to change this container name. This is what we're going to refer to later when we are writing the code. So I'll just make it like DB student context. So now we can start creating our entity. The entity is just the same as the table. So let's start with departments entity or departments table. The property is the same as the field. So this is just depth ID. The property type is integer. Okay, to add another uh, field or property, right click, uh, add new scalar property. Let's call it depth name. This is string by default, so that's okay already. Let's create another entity or table. This time, let's call it the students. And the property name is the stud ID in the chair. Click okay, right click to add another property let's call it name that's string that's okay right click add new scalar property this is the third property let's call it gender now for gender let's try to change the the maximum length let's make it six and the nullable let's make it true meaning it's okay if they are not we're not going to put any value in the gender next is we're going to create an association between the two tables uh, this is a good name departments and students so what does this mean it means that uh, for every department it can have many students but one student can belong to only one department okay let's add a foreign key click ok that is our association. Let's save it. Now right click and generate database from model. Here is our <laughs> error. We're needing our error. So this time we're going to call it DB student. Let's just say yes. It's saved in users alley documents. Yes. That connection string will be added in our web.config. So just click next. And this is our DDL finish. So here is where our error will occur when we execute it and connect there. It's saying that the database uh, DB student does not exist. To resolve this, we're going to manually create this database. So create new SQL Server database. Our server is local DB, uh, version 11.0. This is for local DB. And we will create again DB student. OK, so that if we run it again and execute it, 
commands completed successfully. The idea, the thing is, uh, if you go to our SQL Server uh, and our databases, refresh. Okay, there, there is this our DB students. This is the first one that was created. This is what we created manually. Now, if we go here to our database, its location is here. Users Ali DB student point MDM. So to, to make it work, this is what we're going to use now. So there are two things that we need to change if we're going to use this database. Uh, but first, let's go to Server Explorer. Here we have to modify the connection of DB student context to this DB student point MDM. Test connection, okay. Click OK. And the second thing is um, our web config. We have to go to our connection stream and make sure that the path of our database here is the same as in our new database. That's it. Control S. Okay, so to be sure that it is already working. We'll create another entity. <clears throat> Let's call it Majors. And the property name is Major ID. It's in the chair. We'll add another property. Let's call it Major. Okay, then we'll add an association between the two. It will be for the Majors and Students. So it's majors. So that means uh, for every ma major, there are many students, but every student can only have one major. Add foreign key. Then let's just change this foreign key to major ID. Okay. Let's try if our database is now working once we generate it. Wait. It's not map. Okay, that's okay. No problem. Uh, generate database from model. Finish. Yes. Okay, let's execute it. Connect. Well done. Okay, so there is no error now. So to continue with our activity, we'll create a web form and use a grid view to display the contents of the department entity. Okay, so let's create our web form. Add new item our web form add let's go to the design view and we'll add a grid view just to show oh it's in data just to show our data okay so it's grid view let's go to our code behind okay before i forget i think we have not yet uh, added any uh, data to our table. So let's start with the department, show table data, let's see computer science, information systems, uh, for majors, show table data, let's see BS computer science, BS uh, information system, BS80, okay. And for our students, say Ali, male, from computer science, major computer science, Fatima, female, from computer science, major, and then Ahmed, male, from two, and major is three. Okay, so we can now continue with our code. First, we have to use our context. That is DB student context. Let's set a variable DB is equal to new DB student context. So we'll make our query using link. Variable query is equal to from 
our alias Q in DB uh, depart there, our table departments, our entity departments, select uh, everything for Q. Next is that we have to set the view one data source equal to our query, but not just query, we have to convert it to list, then bind it. Grid view one that data bind. So let's look at it in our browser. Okay, there it is. Uh, the two records, computer science and information systems. Well, we just finished discussing entity framework. Uh, thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Masalama.